Hello friends, today we are going to be talking about weight loss and healthy lifestyle changes. Let's get right into it. Oh, after we get our morning hugs, those are important to a healthy lifestyle, huh? <laughs> Good morning, sweetheart. <laughs> Weight loss and healthy lifestyles is such a tricky topic because what works for one person may not work for another person. But if this helps even one of you, I'm here for it. I'm just gonna be sharing my opinion and my experience with getting myself healthy. I am in no way a professional, so please consult a doctor before making big changes in your life. Let me start by saying that your weight and my weight do nothing to determine our value or self-worth. We are 100% worthy at any weight, just the way we are. Next, I am so grateful for my body and all that it allows me to do. I have four amazing children because of this body and a very full and active life. I have never been considered skinny, but I have felt active and confident at just about every weight. But there has come a time where I want my outside to match how awesome I feel on the inside. And while reading this book, I came across this passage. I decided I finally had to drop my weight so I could be more authentic to who I am and was meant to be. I always had energy and personality and I finally became fed up living in an outer body that I didn't feel was proper reflection of the strength and vivaciousness that I carried within. There's never been that many things that my weight has stopped me from doing, but I want my outside to match my inside. And I also want to be healthy for these amazing kids that I get to raise. Cheers. Like I said, I have rarely let my weight keep me from pursuing things that I've wanted to do. But sometimes I'm a little taken aback when I see a picture or a video of myself and I'm like, hmm, that doesn't match how I feel on the inside. Now there've also been really frustrating days where I feel like nothing fits right and I'm bursting out of my skin. Don't get me wrong, I'm not always happy being the weight that I am. There have been days when I eat everything in sight, not because I'm hungry, but because I'm stressed, tired, overwhelmed, anxious, bored, all of the things. I have lost and gained a ton of weight bringing four beautiful babies into this world. And I've also lost a lot of weight using prepackaged meals, weight loss plans, really strict dieting. The problem is, I just put the weight right back on the minute I start eating regular food. So I knew there has to be a better way. About six months before the pandemic started, I started a weight loss plan where you ate prepackaged food. I lost a lot of weight quickly. So when the pandemic hit, my kids came home from school and were home for a full year. We homeschooled and I pretty much fell off my plan, ate whatever I want, whenever I wanted, and probably even more because it was really stressful. And surprise, surprise, all the weight came back on really quickly and then some. I can't even remember like the turning point of when I like changed. And several times I tried to get back on that eating plan, but once I went back to regular food, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't eat their microwave meals anymore. It wasn't the answer for me for real healthy lifestyle changes. So have you ever started getting that nudging in your life that something needs to change? Well, that has been me for about the last four months. And so I decided it was time to start a health journey. So this is the start of my healthy lifestyle journey. My goal is to make changes that will like stay with me for a lifetime. Something I can do even when I'm on vacation or going out with girlfriends. That's what we're looking for. Okay, bye boys, have a good day. Bye. Love you. Bye-bye. I know. So as I'm filming this video, I'm about eight weeks in on my health journey. So I hope we'll be able to film another one of these videos in the future and see how far I've come. See what changes I've made, see how my body has changed, and I hope that future me is really proud of where I've come from. Now, feel free to join me on this health journey. I would love to hear your goals, your wins, your struggles down in the comments or message me over on Instagram and we can be in this together. So now the burning question is, what changes am I making? And I'd love to tell you right after I exercise. So let's go drop off Everett and get a good sweat session in.
So a few months ago, I was on Instagram and I started following this lady that was on her journey of losing 100 pounds. She was always showing her food tracker, which was this notebook where she kept track of all the food she ate. She would share the food she ate in a day. She kept saying things like, water first, veggies most, and I was intrigued. It was really fun to follow along on her journey and see all her wins. As I delve deeper, I realized that the 2B Mindset is a nutrition program through Beachbody, and it was created by a lady named Ilana. She is a registered dietitian, and I started following her on Instagram. I was so inspired by her because she absolutely loves food and makes you want to love good food as well. She's amazing, and she also lost 100 pounds. So I did a few things to help me start my journey off on the right foot. Number one, I ordered Ilana's book called You Can Drop It off of Amazon. Number two is I went on and ordered the 2B Mindset from Beachbody. All I ordered was the food tracker, the water bottle, and then the online course of the 2B Mindset. I did not sign up for the workouts. I did not sign up for their subscription service. I just bought the 2B Mindset bundle to help me get on track. And number three, I found an accountability partner. I usually like to do things alone, but I reached out to my sister-in-law who I knew also had some health goals and we decided that we were going to help keep each other accountable, celebrate highs, we send each other our food log for each day and cheer each other on. And it has been really great to have an accountability partner. Highly recommend it. And number four, I decided to enjoy this journey and see what lifestyle changes I could make out of love for my body and not hate. My worth does not change at all when the scale goes down. I am 100% worthy right now as I am, but I'm so excited to see where this journey takes me and what I'm capable of. All right, it's finally time to get into the actual changes that I have been making, and most of them come from Ilana's book, You Can Drop It. And most of it is based on four main principles. All right, so number one is water first. That is her first principle and it's a big one. Water first. So I tested it out. I just started drinking a lot of water. First thing in the morning, after dinner, I always have water. Now in the past, I was a huge diet soda drinker. I would get one from the gas station, a big giant 44 ouncer, would drink it without even thinking twice, and I never drank much water, never craved water. Only when I worked out would I like really want water. So I just decided I'm gonna really like water. I'm gonna do water first. And my daily goal is 120 ounces of water. I try and drink four of these a day. I usually drink two before lunch, one after lunch, and then one after dinner. And one thing that really helps me is the second that it's empty, I fill it right back up just so I can start again. I don't wait till I'm thirsty again to fill it up. I just, oh, it's empty. I fill it up. I often ask the boys to help me fill it up. I've also found that if I think I'm hungry, sometimes I'm just thirsty, but if I'm hungry, I tell myself, I got ya. I'm gonna take care of you. Let's go get something to eat. But if I'm just thirsty, I got ya. I'm gonna get some water to drink. And as you will probably see later this afternoon, I do typically still have one can of Diet Coke a day in the afternoon after I have lunch with some lime in it and I just enjoy it. I just savor it and enjoy it and it's no longer my main source of hydration. It is just a nice treat in the afternoons. I like look forward to it. Now, drinking that much water does mean that I have to run to the bathroom a lot during the day. So I just count that as extra steps in the day. Like, I get extra steps because I'm always running to the bathroom. Okay, principle number two is veggies most. Whenever possible, I try to fit in veggies most, veggies first, fill half or more of my plate with veggies, get creative with veggies, and I'm loving it. As long as I have them stocked in the fridge, I don't do much planning, I just make sure that I have veggies. Now what happens if I'm like going out and there's, you know, I'm not sure there's gonna be veggies, I'm going to a kid's birthday party or something, I make sure I grab some hummus and carrots before I leave or I will uh, go and 
make myself a salad. That way when I get to the party and all they have is pizza and cake, I'll have a little slice of pizza and be satisfied because I already had my veggies first. And if you're wondering about this makeup, it's Saint makeup and it's awesome. It's kind of like a paint by number. All right, back to the veggies. For lunches, I make lots of awesome, beautiful salads. Uh, I have a video coming up here real soon where I'm gonna share some of the salads that I've just absolutely been loving. I try and make them really interesting. Lots of good toppings, lots of veggies, so that it's not just a boring salad. Ilana, the founder of this 2B Mindset, calls them sexy salads. She's like, make a sexy salad, make it good, make it something you want to eat. Make it colorful, add nuts, make it crunchy. It's just, I've just been having so much fun making good salad. The next way that I've been getting extra veggies is, and whenever I'm sauteing any sort of minced meat, I chop up a ton of vegetables really tiny and add it to whatever we're making. It helps me just fill up without feeling really heavy with a bunch of extra carbs like rice and noodles. I still eat those things, but I just don't make them the main portion of my meals. So for example, I made breakfast burritos the other day for my kids and I decided to saute up a bunch of extra veggies on the side, peppers, onions, mushrooms, and they have their breakfast burritos with egg, um, egg, sausage, and hash browns. I just took the filling from the breakfast burritos and put it over a big bowl of sauteed veggies and it was so good. I did not miss the tortilla at all. Now, if there is a treat that I really want that I would say is a worth it treat, I make sure that I've just had my protein and veggies first. If there's some awesome cinnamon rolls that are homemade and hot and gooey and I really want one, I'll make sure I have some eggs first get some good protein in, maybe with some sauteed spinach, I don't know. Just make sure I get the protein and some veggies in before I indulge in that good treat and then I find that I don't need as much of that treat because I'm already satisfied and full. In addition to salads, I also have been really enjoying like cooking up a spaghetti squash to have along with our spaghetti sauce and meat. Um, yeah, just any way that I can add extra veggies, I will roast veggies every single night in the oven if I don't have any other veggie planned because it's always good. Broccoli, cauliflower, peppers, onions, added to whatever meat protein we're having, I love it. So with the 2B mindset, my goal is 50% of my lunch is vegetables and 75% of your dinner plate is vegetables. It's a plating method. It is not counting calories. It is not weighing your food. You just kind of look at your plate and make sure that you are doing the proportions right. And I'll talk about the food tracker later. It has little pictures to help you remember like, oh, I'm trying to eat more veggies. And it also gives you suggestions for the amount of the plate should be protein and which amount of the plate should be fiber filled carbs. Those are the three things that she really focuses on. Veggies, protein, fiber filled carbs. So that's like your sweet potatoes and your fruits eating it all and loving it all. Okay, that brings us to number three, which is the scale. I don't wanna poke myself in the eye and I'm using my camera as a mirror. I know the scale can be a tricky subject, but Ilana suggests that you use it as a tool to help you in your weight loss. I have had bad relationships with the scale in the past. I feel like uh, I become obsessive over it and I didn't want that to happen but I felt like after reading her book I had a good mindset around it and was ready to start weighing myself daily and it just gives you a good set of information so, so that you can make informed decisions and adjust as necessary. So now as part of my lifestyle change I weigh myself every morning right after I get up out of bed. I go to the bathroom, I weigh myself in my underwear before I eat and drink anything and I write it down in my tracker. It has not become a time where I self-sabotage and get angry at myself and hate myself. It has not become a time where I feel shame. It has become a tool that helps me know what foods that I'm eating help me lose weight, what foods that I'm eating maybe make me gain some weight. I find that it drops and then it bounces around for a while and then it drops again. So now that I've seen those patterns, it motivates me to keep making good choices every single time I have an eating opportunity instead of overeating and then just 
blowing it all and waiting till Monday to start over again. Weighing myself helps me see that having one big meal doesn't blow my whole weight loss journey. It's just one eating opportunity. I ate a lot and then I probably don't eat very much the next meal because I'm not hungry. And I see that as I track my food and weigh myself. Weighing yourself is such an interesting thing because your weight fluctuates so much depending on how much water you drink, how late you ate in the evening, things like that. I just use it as one data point in my weight loss journey, write it down, kind of analyze it every few days, where I am, where I'm going, and then I move on with my day. I don't worry about that weight and then I just weigh myself again the next morning. I don't let it ruin my whole day, even if the scale is up. I usually kind of expect it. If I ate late or I ate a huge dinner or I didn't get enough water the next day, I kind of expect to be up and that's okay because then I adjust, drink more water, eat a little earlier, and move on with my life. All right, next up, number four is tracking my food. So I love using this to be mindset tracker. It gives you a space every day to log your weight, to log your water, and then breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, what was great today, what was your exercise, which is extra credit, and why today was great, and whether or not you pooped. So all of that information is very helpful in understanding why you might be losing weight and why you might not. If you eat it, you write it down. Like I said, it's a plating method. 50% protein, 50% fiber filled carbs for breakfast. Lunch is 50% of veggies, 25% protein, 25% fiber filled carbs. And for dinner, 75% veggies, 25% protein. Um, she has found with the clients that she's worked with that if you've eaten your fiber filled carbs later in the day, you're not usually, you don't usually need them at dinner. You don't usually want them. That has been an adjustment for me. I used to eat most of my carbs at dinner time, but now I just try and make sure I have them earlier in the day and then I don't even miss them at dinner time. I fill up so quickly on veggies that I don't even miss them. The snack also follows the 50% veggie, 50% protein rule. So if I have something like a treat, I just tell myself I'm having a treat and I write it down. I write it down no matter what. If I have dressing or dips, I try and write it down because it's just information that helps me understand my body better. I also like to leave myself little notes like, oh, ate that because I was stressed, ate that because I was bored, didn't really need that, I was already full, or that was so delicious and worth it. I'm so glad I had that cinnamon roll. I just give myself notes that can help me make better choices the next time. I will also keep notes if something made me feel really sick afterwards or if I felt really satisfied and like happy after I had something. It is a great resource to go back to when I feel stuck and don't know what to make for a meal. Now I knew this would happen because Ilana said it would happen, but there are certain foods that you have to be really careful of. And these are foods that one is never enough. I'd heard her talk about this with peanut M&M's. She's like, peanut M&M's, peanut butter M&M's, one is never enough. If I have one, I'm eating the whole entire family size bag. So I have found several things that if I just have one triggers me and I end up eating a ton and feeling really sick, Things like chocolate covered pretzels, chocolate covered almonds. I have to be really careful. One is usually never enough. So I either make sure that I've eaten a good amount of protein and veggies before I have that thing, or I just say no thank you and I move on and I try and find something else to eat or I realize I'm not even hungry, I'm just eating it because it's there and I don't really need to. I don't have a list of things that I can't eat and I can't eat. I can eat whatever I want. I just try and make it a conscious choice that I'm gonna eat it and then I'm gonna write it down so I have it as data. Last thing I wanna say about this is I never tell myself that I'm cheating. You can't cheat because there's nothing that's off limits. I just tell myself the truth. This is a treat, I'm gonna enjoy it, I'm gonna write it down. So those are the four main things from the book, you can lose it. The next thing I wanna talk about is working out. And I tried to talk while I was doing hairspray and it got in my mouth. Yuck. Water's not helping. All right, so when it comes to working out, I work out to feel strong. I work out mostly for my mental health because I just am a better mom if I've done some exercise. 
I work out to challenge myself. I work out because my body loves movement. It does not like to be sedentary. Really, we're not meant to be sedentary. So those are the reasons that I work out. I don't work out to punish myself. I do not work out to burn off a meal that I ate. I work out because I love myself, I love my body, and I am a healthy person and healthy people work out. I have really come to realize that working out is not what makes you lose weight. It is more about what you put in your body. But man, I sure love a good sweat session to just work through feelings, clear my mind, and just feel really strong. I do like to get in a good workout at the gym as often as possible. Right now, my goal is four to five days a week, typically because, you know, real life, it ends up being anywhere from two to five days a week that I get to the gym. Just depending on the week, I just do my best. I have had to get creative. Some days if Hunter's available, he will watch Everett for an hour for me before dinner so that I can get my workout in. Some nights I have to go after the kids go to bed. You know, I've just had to get creative and I feel good because of it. So I hope you see how I am trying to make lifestyle changes rather than just quick fixes so that this can be a healthy lifestyle that I'm leading, not just a fad in my life. At this point in the health journey, I am currently down eight pounds and I feel really proud of that. I feel like I have done a lot of good, small tweaks, daily tweaks, hourly tweaks of listening to my body and figuring out what works, what doesn't, and it's made me really excited for the journey. And the last component that's so important is my mindset. This is called the 2B mindset, and so a lot of it happens up in here. Let's chat about mindset while I make my lunch here. I've got some leftover caribou roast from dinner last night. I'm just gonna heat that up to put on top of my salad. We cooked it with pepperoncinis and some spices. It's a little bit spicy. It's actually really good with some barbecue sauce. So I'm gonna heat it up, add a little barbecue sauce, and it'll be great on top of my salad. All right, that's going in the microwave. I am a really firm believer in the things that we say in our heads matter a lot. Um, our brains will try and tell us stories and our stories aren't always true. So sometimes we have to challenge those things that we have in our brain, especially when it comes to weight loss and our thinking around food and our thinking around anything that is hard. And losing weight, changing your lifestyle is pretty difficult. It's hard and our brain doesn't like discomfort. So it will try and get us to do something comfortable. And so we have to be aware of that. And I work on my mindset because like I said, my brain tries to tell me things that are not true and I get to tell it a different story. So let me give you a few examples. My brain will tell you, try and tell me, you messed up, you ate a lot, just start over on Monday or just start over next week or just, just start over next month, you, you'll be just fine. And I tell my brain, no, I chose to eat that and I can choose whatever I want to eat the next eating opportunity. And I'm a healthy person, so I'm gonna make a healthy choice. It takes some practice, but my brain starts to believe it. I'm a healthy person. I'm gonna make that salad instead of eating the cold pizza that my kid left behind on the counter. It only takes a few extra minutes to make that salad. So I'm gonna do it. My mind might try and tell me, you don't eat sweets and carbs. That's what makes you gain weight and I get to tell it back, I can eat whatever I want, but I can also say no if I don't need it or want it. I have to tell my kids this all the time. They're like, oh mom, you're not eating ice cream. You don't eat ice cream. I'm like, I eat ice cream when I want to eat ice cream and it's worth it to me and I feel like it would be a nice treat, but I'm just not gonna have an ice cream every night after dinner because that's just what we do. We just have dessert. I'm gonna make conscious choices. That feels uncomfortable at first, but after a while, I just don't even think about it. And then sometimes when I do decide to indulge in a treat, my mind might tell me, oh, you gotta like hide this or you need to be ashamed of this. And I get to tell my brain, no, I am going to enjoy this. And I do, I sit and I enjoy it. And often that e leads me to eating less of it. But I try and enjoy it when I do decide 
to have a treat or a really good meal. I just try and enjoy it and savor it. Even though my mind might want me to feel guilty about it, just enjoy it. I write it down and I move on. I really love the idea that each new eating opportunity is its own eating opportunity. There's no more of this like all or nothing mindset. It's like, I'm in charge. If I'm hungry, I'll eat it. If I'm not, I can move on. And you just feel empowered instead of feeling like, oh, I never get to eat anything that I want to. So each eating opportunity that you're presented with, whether it's a night out with your friends or family dinner, family barbecue, you get to make choices for that meal that don't have to determine the rest of your eating opportunities. All right, I'm gonna add this caribou meat to my salad. Now let me give you just one more mindset shift that I sometimes have to make when I'm working out. Sometimes my workouts are really hard and my mind wants to tell me, you're gonna die. This doesn't even make any difference. Why are you doing this? And you know what I tell my mind back? I love a good challenge. I get kind of curious. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. I've never died before doing a workout. And I think my body likes a good challenge. Let's keep going. Just changing my mindset helps me push through. All right, it's time to eat this beautiful salad. I'll come closer so you can see it. And I'm using blue cheese dressing today. Make myself a bib so I don't get my shirt dirty. So nobody else in my family eats blue cheese dressing, so I find that I can just get it right out of the jar and not worry about it. So in this to be mindset tracker, there is a spot every day to write down your, your current mindset up at the top. At first I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to write there, but as I read through this book, she gives you some really good mindsets. And the one that I almost write down every single day is my body loves to lose weight or I can lose weight or I want to lose weight. Because the more that I think that, the more that comes into my mind when I am making a choice of eating something or not. And I really believe that all of this stuff together is what has helped me lose eight pounds. So good. So you might be wondering what my goal is for weight loss. Well, I have a pretty big goal of losing 80 pounds, but that seems pretty daunting. Now, as part of the to be mindset, she suggests that you break your goal down into two pound increments. That means I'm no longer trying to lose 80 pounds. I am trying to lose two pounds 40 times. That seems much more doable. And being eight pounds down, I've reached my goal four times and I've got to celebrate four times. So I, I have set some bigger like monthly goals and my total goal of 80 pounds, but it's nice to look at it in little two pound increments and just really celebrate those along the way by just giving myself a pat on the back and just encouraging myself to keep going because it's really exciting every time you reach that two pound goal. Now I want to be real honest with you guys. There have been days that have been really hard that I have just eaten lots of stuff that made me feel sick. I've had days where I just feel really discouraged because the scale wasn't doing what I thought it should for what I'd been eating. So it's not all sunshine and rainbows and working perfectly. I'm not a robot. I still have lots of feelings and emotions that I have to work through, lots of invasive thoughts about, is this even worth it? But I do truly feel like I am making some lifestyle changes that will continue on even when I reach my goal weight. This is not just getting me to that finish line. Like the journey is the important part, not just reaching that goal. Because once I reach that goal, I'm going to keep doing the same things to maintain it. Now, sometimes I write down my meal right after I do it, but I don't stress too much. I just make sure that I write it down in time to send it to my accountability partner the next morning. Now this to be mindset tracker also has a place for you to plan out your week of meals if you need to, and also a place to plan your grocery list. That is not my personality to plan out everything to a T, so I don't use those sections, but you might find those helpful. 
So I think some of the biggest takeaways from the last couple of weeks are one, I'm getting a lot better at recognizing when I feel full, when something makes me feel sick, um, when I don't feel good after eating something, and I can use that information to adjust future meals. It also has made me see just how many opportunities I'm given throughout the day to eat something, really something that should just be a treat. Instead, I was just eating it all the time and just never feeling hungry in between eating because I was just constantly having something um, because it was presented to me and I'm not doing that anymore. Second, I really do feel full and satisfied when I do water first, veggies most. It's good, it's a good concept. Next is that a little bit of planning goes a long way. Like I said, I am not one to plan out each and every one of my meals, it's just not me. I don't even do meal planning, really. I have a very loose meal plan in my mind, but what I do plan out is that I always plan to have lots of veggies and good options in my refrigerator. I have some chicken and ham and things to throw together a good salad, lots of different colorful vegetables. Just having a lot of veggies available makes it so much easier to make good choices. I also don't overcomplicate things. If there's a salad that I'm really liking, I'll make it for days until I'm kind of sick of it and then I'll move on to a different thing. Lastly, the concept that one eating opportunity does not derail the rest of my eating opportunities. I have just as much choice the next time as I did now. That is a powerful thought. Time to get some editing done. So I feel like I've barely just scratched the surface on all the thoughts that are going through my head with this lifestyle change that I'm having, but a lot of it has stemmed from this book right here you can drop it so i will put a link down in the description below on how you can order this on amazon if you're wanting to learn more about this it also has a lot of recipes in the back that can be helpful for breakfast lunch and dinner all i can say is that i feel so empowered and grateful to just have a plan moving forward i'm sure there'll be lots of ups and downs along the way but I'm excited for the journey. Let me know down in the comments what your health goals are so that we can cheer each other on. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you again real soon for more of this Alaska life. Bye-bye. Cheers. A little afternoon treat. With this little bit of lime in it. So good.